In this video, we are going to be looking at a comprehension question type that asks us about a writer's tone. Many students struggle with this type of question, usually not because they don't understand the question, but because they are unable to identify the correct tone in a given text. So that's what we'll be focusing on today. Hi everyone, I'm Teacher Cheryl and welcome back to Cher's English Tuition. In this channel, we bring you mini lessons for secondary school English. If you want to stay on top of your English game, and if you find our lesson helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you never miss out on any of our lessons. Don't forget to share it with your friends as well. So in today's lesson, we will start off by looking at what tone actually is, and then we'll go through a simple strategy on how to accurately identify tone. Of course, we'll take a look at some examples as well. And do stay tuned till the end for a special bonus just for you. So what exactly is tone? Tone refers to the writer's attitude or feelings about something, and it usually relates to the writer's purpose. Take a look at this picture. The two boys in the picture are saying the same thing. They're both saying, so glad to be here. But they're probably using different tones. Let's look at the picture on the left first. Notice the bright blue water and the bright yellow sand. The sun is also shining very brightly in the picture, so it looks like a very nice day to be at the beach. And you can see that the boy is smiling. So I would think that a cheerful tone is used for this picture. So glad to be here, meaning that he's very happy to be at the beach on this beautiful day. Now let's compare this to the picture on the right. You can see the blue of the water is not as bright as the one on the left. Even the sand is a little bit of a dull yellow. And notice the huge grey cloud in the sky. It's raining. It's not a very good day to be at the beach. You can also see that the boy is not smiling. So I don't think he's very happy to be here. However, he said so glad to be here. So what kind of a tone do you think he would use in this context? Most likely, it's a sarcastic tone. Now let's check the meaning of sarcastic. In the Cambridge Dictionary, it defines sarcastic as using remarks that clearly mean the opposite of what you say in order to hurt someone's feelings or to humorously criticize something. So going back to the picture, I think the boy has definitely used a sarcastic tone because he actually means the opposite of what he is saying. He's saying that he's so glad to be here, but he's definitely not happy, so he's not actually glad to be there. And secondly, it looks like he's criticizing the weather as well. Therefore, he's most likely used a sarcastic tone. Let's look at this next one. To ease the peak hour congestion, commuters who take the train earlier will get an early travel discount. And in the second picture, it shows 6 a.m. in the morning with the text that reads, and just like that, the non-peak hour becomes the new peak hour. Can you identify the writer's tone in this sentence? So let's take a look. In the first picture, it tells us that the early travel discount is supposed to help ease the peak hour. However, in the second picture, we can tell that the problem is not solved. So in the sentence, the writer is using an ironic tone. Let's check what ironic means. So the Longman Dictionary defines ironic as an ironic situation is one that is unusual or amusing because something strange happens or the opposite of what is expected happens or is true. An example sentence that they have given is, your car was stolen at the police station. How ironic. Because a police station is supposed to be the safest place. However, this person had his or her car stolen of all places at the police station. So coming back to this, this situation is definitely unusual because the peak hour became earlier and what happened is the opposite of what is expected. So the peak hour congestion has not been solved. So let's take a look at a simple strategy on how to identify tone. There are only two steps in this strategy. The first step is to check the connotation. Now there are three types of connotation. The first one is a positive connotation and that usually means, for example, that the writer is appreciating something. The second type is neutral. When the writer uses a neutral tone, he or she is being objective. And the third one is negative connotation. This is where the writer is criticizing something. 
So after we've decided on the connotation, what we need to do next is to analyze the word choice. So if there is a positive connotation, the writer might use, for example, a word like aroma, because aroma usually refers to something that smells nice. If the connotation is neutral, the writer might use a word like smell. So for this word smell, we don't know whether it's a bad smell or a good smell. And if there is a negative connotation, we might use a word like stench, which refers to a bad smell. Okay, so now we have these two steps. Step one, check connotation. Step two, analyze word choice. Now we're going to look at actual examples. Take a look at example one. Wow, it's so amazing. With a top speed of 200 kilometers per hour, that car can almost fly. What is the tone of this sentence? So remember, the first step is to check the connotation. Is it positive, neutral, or negative? And I think this example has a more positive connotation. So let's check the writer's word choice. The writer uses wow! exclamation mark. It's so amazing! exclamation mark. So this expresses astonishment or admiration. Definitely something positive. The writer has also used these words top speed, which refers to the fastest speed possible. The next phrase is almost fly. This is like a dream, right? In the future, we want flying cars. So now that we've completed steps one and two, what tone do you think this writer has used? Let me know your answers in the comment box below. So this writer has definitely used an excited tone, or you can say that he has used an enthusiastic tone. Let's just double check the meaning of enthusiastic. The dictionary defines enthusiastic as feeling or showing a lot of excitement and interest about somebody or something. So coming back to this example, I think that's true. All the words definitely tell us that the writer is excited about this particular car. Let's go on to example two. This is taken from Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, and I'm going to read the paragraph for you first. There was a steaming mist in all the hollows, and it had roamed in its forlornness up the hill like an evil spirit seeking rest and finding none. A clammy and intensely cold mist. It made its slow way through the air in ripples that visibly followed and overspread one another, as the waves of an unwholesome sea might do. What is the tone of this paragraph? What I'd like you to do is pause the video now, go through the two steps that we just covered, and try to identify the tone. Then, post your answer in the comment box below. Okay, have you done that? So let's go through the answers. The first step is to check connotation. So do you think it's a positive, neutral, or negative connotation? I think this paragraph has more of a negative connotation. Let's take a look at the writer's word choice. The writer used this phrase, a steaming mist. This kind of tells us that it's like a fog that limits visibility. So we probably cannot really see anything if we're standing in this mist. The writer also used the word forlornness. So forlorn means miserable, definitely something negative. The next phrase, like an evil spirit. So this is like a ghost wanting to cause harm because it's evil. Seeking rest and finding none. This tells us that there is no rest, no peace. Definitely quite negative. The next phrase, a clammy and intensely cold mist. This is definitely very uncomfortable because it's not just cold, it's intensely cold. The phrase slow way is also pretty negative because this uncomfortable feeling that the writer has been describing throughout the paragraph so far is moving very slowly. The next one, overspread one another. So again, it tells us that this terrible mist is covering everything. And the final phrase, unwholesome sea. Unwholesome refers to something that is bad for you. So again, something very negative. So after identifying the connotation and the word choices that the writer has used, I have come to the conclusion that this paragraph is in an ominous tone. Again, let's just double check the meaning of the word ominous. So the dictionary defines ominous as suggesting that something bad is going to happen in the future. So going back to the paragraph, I think we are right. It sounds like something bad is going to happen in this part of the story. 
Our next example is taken from the 2020 O-Level Paper 2. I'm going to read the paragraph for you first. Mrs. Morton took out of her bag the books I had borrowed last time and placed them on the front desk. Grace Bennett's books are returned on time, said the librarian. She snapped shut the front cover of each one, sending little gusts of air across the counter. That must be a first. Despite her obvious dislike of me, I gave her my biggest smile and she handed over the tickets and frowned. What is the tone of the librarian's comment? So the librarian's comment is, Grace Bennett's books are returned on time. That must be a first. What I'd like you to do is to pause this video now, go through steps one and two, identify the tone, and leave your answer in the comment box below. So let's check our answer. In step one, we have to check the connotation. Is it positive, neutral, or negative? And I think the librarian's comment has a more negative connotation. Let's analyze the word choice to check. The writer tells us that the librarian snapped shut the front cover of each book. She didn't close them gently, she snapped them shut. And she did that so hard that she sent little gusts of air across the counter. So compare this to her shutting the books gently or closing the books gently. So she's definitely not happy about something. The paragraph also tells us that the librarian did not like the writer because she showed obvious dislike towards the writer. And it also tells us that the librarian frowned. So we usually frown when we're unhappy about something. And the librarian frowned in response to the writer giving her her biggest smile. So the answer to this question would be a critical or a disapproving tone. Now, I'd like you to think of this. Do you think sarcastic could be a possible answer to this question? Let me know your thoughts in the comment box below. In order to check our answer, we need to go back to the definition of sarcastic. So remember, sarcastic means using remarks that clearly mean the opposite of what you say in order to hurt someone's feelings or to humorously criticize something. So going back to the librarian's comment, she mentioned that Grace Bennett, the writer, returned her books on time. So this is not really the opposite. She's basically stating what was happening. She also mentioned that must be a first. Again, I don't think she's stating the opposite. She's probably implying that Grace Bennett usually returns her books late. Maybe that's why the librarian doesn't really like her. So therefore, I think sarcastic would not be the best answer for this question. Let's go on to the next example. This is taken from the 2015 O-Level Paper 2. Alice smiled delightedly and went to greet them. I don't suppose amongst all your belongings you have a set of keys for the house? I seem to have mislaid mine. I always bring the spare set. Although, of course, it's very unlikely that either of my sisters would be stupid enough to forget her own. He grinned and Alice saw him again as a young child, laughing mischievously as he picked on his sisters unmercifully. What is the tone of the brother's comment about his sisters? So let's first identify the brother's comment. Now the question specifically includes brother's comment about his sisters. So we're only going to focus on that, which is, Although, of course, it's very unlikely that either of my sisters would be stupid enough to forget them. Once more, pause this video and identify the tone of the brother's comment using steps 1 and 2. Then share your answer in the comment box below. Hopefully you've done that, so let's go through the answer. Step 1 is to check the connotation. And I think the brother's comment has a positive connotation. If we analyze the word choice, we can see that the brother grinned. And when someone grins, it's usually because they're happy about something, not because they're angry or sad. It also tells us that Alice saw him again as a young child. So she saw him as an innocent young boy again. And this young boy was laughing mischievously. Again, he's laughing, which means he's happy about something. And mischievously tells us that he's being very playful. So the answer to this question would be a teasing tone. Let's check the meaning of the word tease. It means to laugh at someone and make jokes in order to have fun by embarrassing them 
either in a friendly way or in an unkind way. So going back to the brother's comment, I think he's laughing or making jokes about his sister trying to embarrass them. This next example is taken from the 2017 O-Level paper. The she-wolf sat down, pointed her nose at a star, and began to howl. Gradually, the other wolves joined her, till the whole pack was howling in unison. As sleep overtook him, the circle of fire began breaking into segments, so that there were dangerous gaps in it. Once, he woke up and saw the she-wolf gazing at him with hungry wistfulness. I guess you can come and get me at any time now, he muttered, half asleep. What is the tone of the man's comment above? So the man commented, I guess you can come and get me at any time now. Pause this video now, use steps 1 and 2 to try to identify the tone of this comment. And again, share your answer in the comment box below. So let's check our answers. I think this comment has more of a negative connotation. This is because the writer tells us that there is a whole pack of wolves there, so there's not just one wolf, but many wolves. Secondly, the writer tells us that sleep overtook the man, which means he must be really exhausted, so exhausted to the point that he could not stay awake. The paragraph also tells us that the circle of fire began breaking into segments so that there were dangerous gaps in it. The man was probably using the circle of fire to protect himself from the wolves. So if the fire is breaking into segments, it means that he has no more protection from the wolves. It also tells us that the she-wolf was gazing at the man with hungry wistfulness. So it sounds like the wolf was actually pretty close to the man. Plus, she must be famished. And again, the writer repeats that the man was half asleep. So once again, he is very exhausted. Therefore, a possible answer to this question would be a resigned or hopeless tone. Okay, so we've gone through so many different examples using the two steps that I mentioned right at the beginning of this video. Hopefully, it has helped you to be able to accurately identify the writer's tone. Now, remember, at the beginning of the video, I also mentioned that there is a bonus for you. I have compiled a short list of common types of tones. You can download the PDF from the link in the description box below. Now remember, this list is not exhaustive. So what you should be doing is to add on to the list every time you come across a different type of tone. So in today's video, we have covered what tone is, and we've also looked at a very simple strategy on how to identify tone, and we've also learned how to apply those two steps to various examples. Don't forget to download your common types of tone freebie. Remember, the link is in the description box below. So that's all for today's lesson. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Most importantly, please leave a comment below if you have any question about this lesson. And also, feel free to send us your video requests as well. See you in the next one. Bye!